Where are we? Some cathedral. Some very ornate brickwork. Seldom seen today. And very techy features. Where could this be? This is an amusement park. What kind of amusement park could this be? Clearly a repurposed building, but where? This building is in Japan, and this is Disney World in Japan. The Tower of Terror at Disney Sea. So here we go. In Tokyo, Japan, the Tower of Terror. I'm really seeming like the Tower of Tartaria, but not the point of this video. Welcome. Today I wanted to talk about the railways. In the last video we had a look at the beautiful hotel in Quebec, Canada, and truly adding some new depth to the idea of constructing these rail systems all across North America in this early time period of the 1800s. And I've had comments and people said their grandfathers had worked on the rails. People have worked on the rails. But laying of tracks being the easiest part of creating a railway system, oftentimes traversing great ravines and canyons and having to build bridges at other times boring through mountains and making tunnels and most certainly throughout this whole process moving huge amounts of earth in order to allow the laying of level tracks and again tracks aside this alone and the idea that this much dirt could be moved with horse oxen and wagon is completely absurd very similar to dredging out many of these canals laying of the rails is very similar and here we're told the history of railroads begins in the 1720s a railroad was reportedly used in the construction of the french fortress in nova scotia Railroads played a large role in the development of the United States around 1810 to 1850. The American Railroad mania began with the founding of the first passenger and freight line in the nation being the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad in 1827 and the laying of the first stone and the beginning of its long construction heading westward over the obstacles of the Appalachian Mountains would begin in 1828, and the construction and expansion would continue for the next 45 years until the financial panic of 1873. Followed by a major economic depression, many companies went bankrupt, and growth was halted. And here's a little look at a bridge, for example, an old bridge. And this is just one boring little part, nothing spectacular, perhaps hundreds similar to this, must be built. The building of a train or a canal, once again, is so much more than what it initially seems in the passing. And how would that fit into the false narrative? that the ancients had advanced trains and perhaps more advanced modes of transportation if everything else in their lives were as impressive as their architecture. And to hear a little look in 1891, we can see a little section of the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad, an absolutely impressive connecting from New York City, clear over here, to Chicago, and I'm not sure if all of these are smaller lines, they must be, as this is pre-automobile, and again, much of this construction going on in the mid-1800s, 
and very advanced to have this much rail lines and at the very least roads and these are roads I do recall seeing Indianapolis from above and everything does lead to the center like spokes in a hub and again the laying of the tracks themselves being the least of one's concerns it's the laying of a level surface and cutting through the rugged wilderness of the early and mid 1800s using the most primitive means available to our people in this time period and very impressive and accurate map making here's one from 1876 again from the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad Company and here we can see how far they got and again seeming as if these may be smaller transcontinental branches but even so 1876 the country is only founded 100 years ago and such a small unjustified population and we could debate the need for such a mode of transport in this time period but today I wanted to just consider the idea of constructing something like this using little more than human labor and horsepower and here a little look at the founders of the Baltimore Railroad Company with its roots going back to 1827 and here we go 1827 no more than 50 years after the inception of our country George Washington was said to have wooden teeth and here they are prepared to build not only a rail system eventually across the nation but to construct giant machines to make a leap from horse and wagon to giant trains of steel across an impossible wilderness and again perhaps but perhaps not seeming perfectly unnecessary and ridiculous for a people of this time and here we're told the longest bridge in the United States was this Thomas viaduct here we can have a little look at that in Maryland completed in 1835 1835 and here we go again just to illustrate the point that the easiest part of constructing a rail system is the laying of the tracks themselves this is absolutely over the top five miles of this coring stone skilled masonry and amazing engineering to have this baby run nice and level across this absolutely uneven terrain in the grand year of 1835 very impressive and here real quick while all this is going on they're building underground subway stations and again who cares about the tracks look at everything that is going on before we can even get to the tracks we're digging massive holes somehow structurally supporting the earth until you can come back and lay this amazing brickwork and pouring who knows how many yards of infinite concrete and absolutely mind-blowing in 1906 built underneath a city hall 
very remarkable. And here I was prompted by Peter Gibbons to check out this Napa State Hospital. It is said to have opened in 1875. No need to construct. Zero mention about any sort of construction in the history we're told. The building was known as the Castle, an ornate and imposing building constructed with bricks. And the Insane Asylum in Napa, California, known for its fine wine. Who would have known there was such a need for a psychiatric hospital of this splendor in 1875? out in the hills of California. And I thank you for this fascinating share. And the hospital seems to be a repeated theme of designation for a castle-like structure. And here I was prompted to have a little look at the Cascade County Courthouse in Great Falls, Montana, founded in 1887 it was constructed at a cost of twenty thousand dollars and let's see what twenty thousand dollars can buy here we go the architecture once again of the old west the cowboys of montana being very traditional when it came to their courthouses oh and forgive me it looks like this courthouse was built in 1901 to 1903. Two years, stone was quarried six miles away. A stone dome had been planned, but a copper dome was built instead. And here somebody shared something pretty interesting pertaining to this Romanian parliament building, supposedly built in 1984. Over the course of a dozen or so years, and most of the photos we see look similar to this. Still unsure, but what I found really fascinating about this share, and I do thank you for this, is these underground tunnel systems found underneath this parliament building and clearly of a very old nature and perhaps connecting with the anomalies the potential remains of star forts and something much older than any anomalies that we find on the surface and very impressive and again similar stories of these tunnel systems being built in the same time periods with very primitive means. And here, this article was also sharing the intricate subway system that they built in the same late time period, only to let it fall into disrepair and abandon it completely and very fascinating feats of engineering that make no sense and moving on now this next segment is going to be one of the scariest videos i've put out in a while i felt it could be a risk to the channel and have decided to post it on my off-topic channel or my backup channel just in case it should raise any issues here I was simply going to show you the first minute of the video. And if you like it or are interested, I will leave the link below. I do hope you enjoy. And in this little segment, I wanted to share my joy and excitement. Truly, I have just hit the jackpot. Something that may seem small to some, but very exciting to me. The most exciting thing I have found in my research for some time. Typically I share 
a different kind of research, as you all know. But this is my other passion, the law, and all the fraudulency that goes on within it. And how the more I study the law, the more I realize it is very beneficial to us. The only problem is we don't know it, and we don't know our rights. And this allows us to be tricked and trapped by governments and corporations who understand the system well. And what we find is when somebody else understands the system and shows their understanding and knowledge to these groups engaged in lies, typically they back off only because they realize you know the truth and it's game over. Well, that's it for today. I do hope you enjoyed and do have a blessed day. Please like, comment, and subscribe.